Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday video. Today, I want to quilt with rulers on my Q Zone frame. This has been one of the number one things that has been requested since I started shooting videos on this frame. And it is one of those things that I think is going to take a little bit of consideration, a little bit of planning. And you might end up needing to buy a ruler base depending on your machine. So I have the Juki F600 here. It's a machine that I've had and used for years and it just happened to be a great choice to fit on this frame. Uh, of course, it has a limited amount of space that I can quilt in. I can only quilt about a five inch row at a time when I'm quilting on this machine. However, there is one major benefit and that is uh, this base around the needle is quite large. So I measured and I have four and a half inches from the side of the foot that's front facing to the front of the machine, which is on this side. I have two and a half inches from the needle to the back of the machine and three and a half inches from the foot to this side, which is, you know, when it's on a frame, that's technically the front, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so this is a lot of stability and uh, a lot of space. And that is important because when you're working with a ruler, it needs to be supported. This is why long arms have separate ruler bases. It's an attachment that has to attach to the machine in order to give you basically like a little shelf in order to quilt on it. So this is basically the same idea. If your machine is more on the bulky side uh, or you've got one of these things, these um, the storage compartment that slots onto it. You wanna go ahead and attach that and make that front flat section as bulky as possible. Now those extension beds, unfortunately, can't usually work. And the reason is, in this machine I actually had one and I tried it out. Most of those extension beds require feet. They have like little feet to support it and they need something to set on basically out here and there's nothing for them to set on so they don't work. Uh, so really the base of the machine itself and the little storage compartment around the needle needs to be on the bulky side and really the only way to know if it's going to work is grab a ruler, take your machine out of, if it's in a tabletop, uh, in a, like a flatbed table, take it out, put it on top of a table and try some ruler foot quilting, just pushing the quilt uh, over the machine and see if the ruler feels tippy. And that's really going to be the only way to know if your machine is going to work for this. And I would say this is also going to be something that's kind of a handed kind of thing. Because I've got so much space here to the front side, I feel really comfortable with this because I'm left-handed. I keep the ruler in my right hand and I steer the machine with my left, okay? But if it was the opposite and I was right-handed and I only had that two and a half inch side to work with, it might not feel so good. So this could be something that could work for a left-handed person but not a right-handed person or vice versa. It's gonna be machine specific and it's gonna be quilter specific. So I can't give you just a flat out like, yes, your machine will work, <laughs> you know, and yes, you can quilt with rulers. I can't really do that. Uh, I do know that So Steady does make a ruler base, basically kind of, it's like a little lip you know, that extends your machine to, I think it's about 15 inches square, basically. You might wanna look into that as far as adding that as an attachment to your machine if it feels tippy to you. What you don't wanna do is jump on your machine and start ruler foot quilting and have the ruler tip. Because what can happen if you get it on here and you don't have enough space to support it and it gets tippy, the ruler can tip and crash into the needle which can break your machine. Uh, it can feel unstable. It could mess up your quilt. It could break your machine. So don't quilt with rulers unless you're sure it's feeling stable, you're comfortable doing it, and it's supported so that your non-dominant hand is holding the ruler and you're steering the machine with your dominant hand. So I hope that makes sense. I just, I kind of got lucky to be completely honest with this particular machine. Uh, and that was kind of a happy accident that it ended up having that nice big thick base. And one of the very first things I started playing with was the ruler foot quilting. And I found it worked out really, really well. Okay, 
So to get started, uh, I did advance the quilt through the frame and please check out the other video that I shared last week and that was on uh, advancing a bigger quilt through the Q-Zone frame. And that really went into a lot more detail on advancing side to side as well as forward and back using channel locks, using a needle down, locking the machine and the quilt together so that way it was faster and easier and that's the whole goal right we want to get more quilting time in and less time spent fiddling and clamping our quilt so this week i want to quilt right across this quilt using this ruler this is the super slide ruler and this ruler is really special i designed it for grace company and i designed it with the same curve on both sides and what this helps is that i can do that first line you know, if I can't stick it here behind that uh, foot, that's okay. I can go to the front and I can stitch that first line across, nice curvy line all the way across. And I can just be lining up that ruler, uh, the ruler foot with that nice curve. And then whenever I stitch on down, if it feels more comfortable to put the ruler to the back, well, I've got the exact same curve to the inside. So that way I can use either side of the ruler whenever I need to. And that's really gonna make a big deal. So it might not be apparent straight off how that is an advantage, but I promise you it definitely is. Uh, so there are some straight lines in this ruler that are designed to help you line things up nice and straight across your quilt. So if you have a seam line and you want that curve to be you know, quarter inch, a half inch away from that seam line, you can line it up using the lines on this that are etched on the back of the ruler. So what I'm gonna do just to get started with this quilt, first off, I need to finish clamping it in place. Uh, but I'm gonna also stretch a piece of masking tape across that's nice and straight. So that way I can use that masking tape to line up with the lines in the ruler. Now, if I had a different quilt design or if this seam line that's on the blocks was a little bit closer in, then obviously I could go off the seam line instead. This is one situation where I'm smack in the middle of a block and I don't have anything to go off of. And I wanna make sure that this first line that I stitch is a curve, but the curve is straight to the quilt. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let me turn on my other camera so you can get a nice close up and let's start ruler foot quilting on the Q-Zone together. So the first thing I did here was get this masking tape in place. And actually I decided to do double duty with the masking tape. I decided to place it at the very edge of my quilting space, meaning that I took my machine down here and basically pulled it all the way uh, against the frame so that the quilt and back bar were pushing up against that machine. And then I backed it off by about an eighth of an inch and then locked my channel lock so I was in a straight line, smoothed out my tape, and then I just stopped about halfway through the block and then on each seam line, and that helped me smooth out the tape nice and straight. And using the channel locks on the left side of the machine ensures that I was stitching straight. That's a horizontal channel lock. It locks your machine into this position. So I know that that tape is nice and straight and square to the quilt. And now I'm gonna use the super slide ruler to quilt some lines. Couple other things about this ruler, the uh, etched lines on the sides are important. There's a line one from the edge that gives you a quarter inch mark uh, and it's on both edges. And basically that's your stop start point. If you stop a quarter inch from one edge and you begin a quarter inch from the other edge, and that's stopping and starting within the ruler. Sorry, I'm trying to show you there. <laughs> that's a better angle. Uh, so if I stop at that mark, on both sides, then the line is continuous. Uh, and I gave that little bit of a lip just so that way you had a place to start and stop. Okay, so we have a decision, you know, if we wanted to use the tape, obviously, to keep things straight, then I could go like this, but obviously I'm gonna run into my design right here, don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna start with a U-shaped curve here. And I think I'm gonna line this up. And you've gotta also calculate that you're adding a quarter inch with the foot. And uh, so uh, wherever I'm stitching, uh, I've got to think, okay, I'm adding an extra quarter inch there, extra. So yeah, this look, and you know, another idea too, because we've got one design, uh, you know, already stitched in the quilt, I did sharp stippling back there. We might want to stitch just a straight line right across just to kind of say, okay, that's one design and then here's another design. Maybe we should do that first. So I'm gonna drop my needle in the down position. First off, ruler foot. Make sure your foot is in the down position before you do anything on your machine. 
and then needle up, needle down to bring the thread from the bobbin up to the top. There we go. And yeah, I think the idea of just stitching some straight lines across would be nice. And that can be easily accomplished with those channel locks. There we go, that's a good position. I'm about a half of an inch away from my other design. Reach through, close my channel locks. That means that I'm locked in that horizontal position and I can begin stitching across. Now I'm steadily increasing my speed on my uh, crew, uh, my speed controller here. And yes, it is on my list to try out the Sure Stitch regulator as well. I really want to give that a try and see how that is different from the speed controller. And it requires a modification. I have to kind of play around with the wheels and stuff on my machine and frame. So I kind of wanted to just get a few more videos knocked out before I tried that out. So it's on my list and it's coming. Just be patient. Okay, so the one thing about this design is that, you know, I have to advance the quilt side to side on this frame uh, because it is wider than the frame. So I'm gonna get down here and I've already marked uh, with tape where I should stop. So I'm gonna get down here and then I'm gonna just stop and break thread. And this is the thing, if you have a design like this where you know you have something continuous that's running all the way across your quilt then you're going to have thread breaks okay so how do we do a thread break properly i'm going to needle up so my needle's in the up position i have to lift the foot to take the tension off the thread pull the whole machine over a good couple of inches this is like eight inches so it's pretty extreme but still you really want to have a nice long thread tail Drop the foot again, super important. Even though it's just a thread cutter, uh, hitting the thread cutter usually will drop the needle. So you need to make sure that that foot, ruler foot's in the down position. Hit your thread cutter. There we go. Okay, so we have cut thread and left nice long thread tails. I'm gonna give this thread tail, I hope you can see this. If I give that a gentle tug, and I'm gonna grab the tip of a needle here. I've got a little cheater needle. I'm just gonna pick at that. That'll bring up a loop. That loop is the bobbin thread. Yay, so now we have top thread and bobbin thread on the surface of the quilt. I can tie off and bury that before I advance the quilt through the frame. All right, let's go all the way back to the beginning. So here I am back on the left edge of the quilt. And I think I'm gonna pull up thread basically in the same spot uh, where I was before. And uh, the reason is I think I'm gonna stitch my curve and I'm gonna use that line I just stitched to travel stitch. That'll be handy. And that might, you know, I might use my uh, slice ruler for the straight lines as I uh, stitch in the ditch or I could use my channel locks, one or the other. All right, there we go. Needle down again to take that needle into the down position and then just hang on to these thread tails so that way they don't get sucked into the bottom of the machine. I'm going to stitch back and then forward again just to secure that and secure the edge of the quilt and then I don't have to worry about those thread tails anymore. Okay, now it's time to use the ruler and here I'm just lining this up so that I have an etch line on the ruler lining up perfectly with that tape. And this is quarter inch masking tape. You don't have to use quarter inch masking tape, but it's just kind of one of those nice convenient things uh, that I just happen to have. And it lines up perfectly with the etch lines in the ruler. So handy dandy. And I'm gonna click the machine on and begin stitching. So right now the ruler is supported by the machine underneath the quilt. But notice how I'm kind of walking my hand along with it because, you know, as the machine moves, as I push the machine over, the location uh, where that, you know, base is, is, is changing. Let's say I was right-handed. Well, the most comfortable way to hold the ruler would be like this. Watch out because, you know, that's nice and stable, but as I get over here, there's less stability and that could get tippy. Now, I don't wanna hold it with my right hand. I'm sorry, guys. There's, you know, it's, it is just dangerous. I feel like I just don't feel in control when I hold the ruler with my left hand because I feel like I need to operate the machine with my dominant hand with my left hand here. Okay, so I ran up against 
that lined, I think that looks really good. Now I've lined up the ruler so that the etched line that is one from the end is lined up basically with the needle. And I'll click that on again. And then what I'm doing is I'm pressing firmly against the ruler so and, and firmly down. You see how I'm hooking my thumb along the edge that stops it from slipping in the downward position. And then I'm carefully pushing the machine over. So I wanted to change my camera angle so you could see my hand moving the machine too. And this is, I think, really important because this is the key to ruler quilting on a long arm is one hand stays on the machine, that's your dominant hand, stays on the controller, the on off button, and then one hand stays on the ruler. Now this situation right here where I'm at, this is, you know, it's a very long ruler. If I was quilting with the mini slide ruler, it's a shorter ruler with a narrower curve. Uh, it wouldn't feel slightly tippy. Uh, and so I just need to be really careful with that. I'm gonna keep my hand here closer to the needle because that's where the stability is. The base of the machine is over here. I'm not gonna grip the ruler way down here because there's nothing underneath it. You know, that's just empty air underneath the quilt right there. So I'm gonna focus on keeping my hand right here on the ruler, but close to the needle. And I'm hooking my thumb here on the edge of that ruler so it doesn't slip. And I'm also making sure those etch lines are lined up nicely through with the masking tape and we're good to go. And the, the main goal here, just as I'm pulling the machine, is to keep the ruler foot pressed up against the ruler, but to not pull it or press it so hard that it um, pushes the ruler out of position. I'm moving fairly slowly, so I think I need to slow down my speed just a little bit, and I just nudge that speed controller dial with my thumb. That's all. Alrighty. So now I'll line up again, and you can see already how nice and straight this is. <laughs> I know that's a little bit confusing, but you can see how the curve is consistent throughout this little space that I've knocked out uh, because I stitched that nice straight line to start with and because of the masking tape. I was really careful to line that up and make sure that was nice and straight too. So I find that really exciting. You know, it's really good to know, hey, you could quilt with rulers, you know, in kind of this all over style, and as long as you've got you know, some tape, some guidelines, it's gonna work out good. So from here, the rest of the quilting is gonna go exactly the same way. I'm gonna continue to use this ruler to quilt nice curvy lines. And as you can see, I shot a time lapse of this so you can see it really, really fast. And I love how this turned out. So I was able to fit two curvy lines through that area and now it's time to advance the quilt. So I thought about this a lot. I ended right here. I could have left the needle in the down position in that spot, but I decided I wanted to break thread and instead have the needle down in that straight line uh, because I really wanna make sure that that's nice and straight across. So here we go. I'm just positioning the machine so I am right on top of the end of that straight line. And I've just turned on my machine a new day, so I, it's gonna do that little kind of clicky noise. I'm losing the, it's very, very light fabric, and then it's also um, very light thread, so I was losing that in. So there we go, right there. And it really wasn't a big deal to break thread on all of those ends. That didn't take too much time. Uh, and it was just a matter of, you know, tying off and hiding all those thread tails the same way I usually do. Okay, so I took off that lat end piece of tape, but I wanna leave on this long strip of tape just so I can have it as a reference guide. Now I'm gonna pop off my clamps. Okay, so now the quilt is free and ready to move. So we're going to just grip the quilt and roll the machine over. And look, I can pull on it and try and go forward and back on, and it can't move because the channel locks are engaged and the quilt is locked to the machine because the needle is in the down position. And yeah, we can shimmy this over just a little bit, just so we're absolutely sure that all this area, we can quilt to the edge. We're not going to run into this end of the frame. So this looks pretty good. I think I'll actually nudge it over a little bit because you've got to always keep your clamps in mind. And we have a one clamp for the middle and then one kind of for each end. And you kind of want to stay consistent with that because that's, you know, it has to kind of line up with where the straps are, you know, where these, 
uh, elastic straps are hanging to the back. So my needle was just in the down position. I don't actually have to start quilting here. I could go on ahead and pop down here and make sure that my piece of tape is in the right location, or I could stitch the straight line. It's really kind of, I could go either way. I think I am gonna go on ahead and stitch that straight line just so that's knocked out and my channel locks are already engaged. So I'm just gonna click the machine on and stitch straight across. So I'm just really slowly and carefully pulling the machine over. Don't wanna go super fast. If I go super fast, then I'm gonna get really, really big stitches. So, okay, we've got thread break here, and all I need to do is just tie off and bury that, and I just tie that into an overhand knot, and then I grab a cheater needle, and I'm keeping these on a little pin place right on top of my machine here, so you can see, little pin place, and I just stick that right there, and it just allows me to quickly and easily pop that needle in, pop the thread tails into the eye, and send that through. And that just makes it, I don't know, it just makes it doable for me. If I had to sit there and thread the needle properly, it wouldn't be as quick. I probably wouldn't bother with it. And I do believe in doing that with every single thread break whenever I am uh, doing any sort of quilting. So my quilting doesn't come undone. Okay, so now I wanna look here and I wanna line up with the line of stitching, that first curvy line of stitching. And I just wanna line up with the end and then I will hit my needle down button. I think I got it. There we go. And then shift the machine back in place, get right on top of that spot again, needle down again. And this is hard to see because it's pretty, it's like bright pink, light fabric, kind of a, got a glittery, shiny kind of look to it too. And it's kind of hard to see. So just doing my best there. So now let's grab our ruler and get back to quilting. So in this case, I have you know these lines that I wanna match up with and I wanna keep that nice curve going down the quilt. And the cool thing about these uh, rulers, they are continuous line. So if I slide this back and forth, eventually one of those lines etched on the ruler is going to line up with uh, a line that I've previously quilted. So right here, this is lining up nicely and I'm going to press firmly, kind of hook my thumb here right around the edge of that ruler and click the machine on and start going. Now, a couple observations from the ruler foot quilting that I did yesterday and I shot that time lapse. Uh, I was quilting slightly differently. Uh, I had the ruler to the back like this and that was certainly working. Uh, and I can line it up here. Let's see if I can line this up nicely so it looks about the same. And I don't have anything I can go off of because that's a different design. If I had straight lines or I had curds or something behind, then I could. Observation as far as you know, quilting that way, the reason why I chose to go to the back is because I had some lines to go off of and that's what felt comfortable. But you've got to watch out for that needle bar. That needle bar can be really tricky. Uh, it's coming down and it's coming down hard and fast. And yes, your hand, if it's behind the machine, then it's going to get hit. So you want to be careful about that. Uh, I think I'm going to stick mostly to having the ruler on the right side because I'm left-handed and uh, to the front here. So I'm going to try and always have things lined up like this. Now, I don't really have much to go off of right now. I really probably, I should have stitched that straight line first, and then I should have dragged the machine across and figured out where my straight line was and gotten tape in position. So yeah, food for thought there. <laughs> I learned something right now. Uh, I don't think that was a good choice because now I don't have anything to go off of. This last line is probably going to be a little bit off in comparison to everything else. And that's not the end of the world. I don't know anyone that would take a ruler to my quilt, you know, or squint at it and say, oh, those lines aren't perfect, you know? So there we go. And now I'll rotate it again. At any time, if something doesn't feel comfortable, if you're way on the end of the ruler and you don't like the feel of that, just rotate it around. It's the exact same curve on both sides. So there we go. Click it on and finish up that line. So you can see how I'm kind of angling my body here. This was something I really started doing a lot yesterday. I'm leaning to the back, so that way my fingers are far away from that needle bar so they're not gonna get hit. And I'm still gripping that ruler 
so it's going to hold down and not shift. I'm gonna stitch a little bit. Actually, I think I can stitch, yeah, I can kind of creep my fingers as I go. I need to shift this ruler ever so slightly. I'm ever so slightly off, but that's okay. There we go. Go all the way down, and I'm gonna stop with the needle down, quarter inch from the end, shift the ruler, and I'm lining it up with that line I quilted before as much as I possibly can and then running that along it. So you see how close that needle bar is to my fingers. That would definitely hurt if it hit. So that's why I'm being very careful to stay away and leaning my body back as I quilt all the way over. Okay, that looks great. I'm gonna break thread one more time. I just feel more comfortable starting from the inside and quilting over largely for spacing, uh, and it also just feels more natural. I'm left-handed and I'm quilting in this left-handed direction. Could have something to do with that. Um, I don't know. So you kind of have to think about that and just experiment and see what feels best for you. And this quilting from uh, left to right is really, really working well. Okay, I'm looking for that line. I probably need to just grab a marking pencil and that will help me out because it is so hard to see against this fabric. That might be another thing to think about. Uh, if you're quilting over your quilt and you know you're gonna have to shift it through at some point, maybe stop uh, in a place, think about where you're stopping and you know being able to contrast so that you can really see what you're doing in that area. That's an idea. I didn't even think about that or I probably would have broken thread in one of the other colors of fabric. Okay, so there we go, lined up again. Hit that start button. And I'm just pressing, I'm, I'm pulling the machine, but I'm also pressing the foot against the ruler. And that was feeling just a little weird, so I just flipped the ruler right over and hit that start button again, right back on track. You know, and at any point in time, you can do that. And you just shift the ruler back and forth until it lines up. And I'm just looking at, you know, basically two or three inches or so lined up with the line before it. That works great. Woo! Yeah, almost clipped me there. <laughs> yeah, it can definitely come down hard, so watch out for that needle bar. So that is usually something you don't have to worry about with a long arm because they have recessed screws, so you're not gonna get hit by anything on the back of that machine. So here we go, I've got three thread breaks, and I'm gonna close, you know, tie these off and bury them, and then I'm gonna shoot a nice close-up so you can see what this looks like. So here is where I had those start starts. And another observation here, guys, don't stop and start in the exact same spot down in a row. As you can see, I got a little bit of pucker here. And then once you see that one, then you can see that little bit of a pucker right there, but it's really not that bad. I'd say the main reason why I had a little bit of a blip is because I could barely see what I was doing when I pulled up thread and did that stop start. So, uh, you know, next time I do lines across, I'll probably stagger them. So I'll bring the straight line all the way over as far as I can go. Then I'll bring the next line maybe over here, then the next line right here, and then the next line stop way over here. And the reason is you wanna stagger those thread breaks so they're not just boom 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 right but I think that looks great I'm so excited because we were able to quilt nice curvy lines with rulers all the way across the quilt even with a side to side shift so that's it for this video we learned how to quilt with rulers and shift from side to side to keep that ruler quilting design consistent through the entire quilt I really love this. I think this is really exciting because not only can we quilt designs like just simple, gently curving lines, we could do straight lines, we could do grid lines, we can do matrix, all kinds of different things. And the key here is just make sure that before you take your clamps off to shift side to side, you drop that needle in the down position and you lock that side channel lock and that's going to lock your machine in a horizontal position so you can shift it over but it won't go forward and back and that means your quilt stays in the exact same location this way on your frame and that's going to make it a lot easier to clamp back up and get started again so i love this this is super super exciting and i hope that you've had a great time and learned a lot too now if you'd like to learn more about the q zone hoop frame come and check it out at leahday.com slash 
slash Qzone. This is an excellent entry level quilting frame. As you can see, you can put your home sewing machine on it. You can also put up to a 19 inch long arm. And I have plans to move my 15 inch long arm to this frame very soon. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and you'll come and check it out at leahday.com slash Qzone. Until next time, let's go quilt.